Hey, salut friends. Today we are taking a look at a hawk from Roberto Greco, created by Christopher Sheldrake, released as a limited edition in 2023. Now, Roberto Greco is a horticulturist. What connects him to the perfume industry, apart from being a perfumist himself, is that he also happens to be a photographer slash videographer for many perfume ads for brands like Dior, Chanel, and Yves Saint Laurent. Evidently, he felt that his photographs could be complemented by music and smell. and used existing perfumes to present them you eventually decided that he would create them originally as a result there have been three fragrances or l'objet parfumant this one rock meaning horse the tone of voice was at another photographic project and in parallel was translated to a scent by master perfumer christopher shelrake now i have smelled greco's previous two releases some time ago Uyer and Porte Sapo are accompanied by their own photographic series. The first one was an aromatic spicy anti-flower concept and the second one was more of an alleric floral. This one is more of an amber floral leather created respectively by Marc Antoine from Parfum de Pierre and Rodrigo Flores. This one by Shelrake obviously. Bit of a surprise these big perfumers are going to work with Greco as they don't do a lot of work outside of their own houses. Speaking of Sheldrake, I am a huge admirer of his work at Serge Lotton, more so the earlier releases and of course at Chanel. Really like his style of bold, thorough, structured and at times peculiar compositions, so I was naturally curious about this collaboration. So what's going on here? Rock opens with some balsamic, medicinal, slightly honeyed sweetness, a butch brown leather, some green nuances and a bouquet of different flowers. The sweetness comes from the acacia, kind of like acacia honey, some from the violet and some fruitiness from the cassia or blackcurrant buds. They all have this sort of dark blue inky character to them. I also get this worn in leather right away, shifting between a vintage brown couch to a saddle. The third part is a melange of yellow florals. So all these parts of the scent are jumping at you at once. Here there is no typical pyramid construction of the scent. no citrus opening or a predictable base notes dry down after the initial opening the other component that intrigued me was the abstract nature of the scent that is one of my pet peeves with new perfumes in general of course there are exceptions but with a lot of them you can just about perceive everything from the notes and the brief the intrigue is gone after a few wearings so this was a nice break to have a scent that has more focus on the blending the lines are blurred and everything is not so obvious This way it comes together as its own smell that way we can enjoy it and still be engaged after multiple wearings. And later when I looked at the brief and the pictures with my limited understanding of photography I realized that it was kind of what they were going for to create symbolic representations of surreal objects, blurred memories and just a mix of intriguing ideas ranging from a cow's muzzle to an imploding body. Though that second part is a bit of a stretch. What has that same glass pattern as the one used in the photographs representing the thought behind coming back to the development of the scent the balsamic opening from the acacia cassia and the violet settles down turns dry after some time and becomes this rubbery pencil eraser champagne cork like scent this comes mainly from the osmanthus they also list a mushroom accord The osmanthus being this fleshy slightly fruity apricoty flower transitions from the opening and pairs well with this leather as it's used in other floral leather scents like osmanthus yunnan and gallo from hermes here it's also joined by narcissus which has this intense green sharp prickly smell up front that cuts through the scent and after some time becomes more of a cool woody smell another floral that brings dimensions to the leather scent like in cuir d'ange The florals are bold, unapologetic here, naturalistic, a bit endolic and heady. It can be attractive and off-putting depending on what hints of the scent you pick up at the time. So I had to be in the right mood for it. The combination of the osmanthus, narcissus, violet and acacia bring up two things. First an earthy soil tincture composed like vibe with the rubbery mushroom accord and second is just a withering floral bouquet. The scent has a very textured and saturated style to it. There is also this mer burning at a distance kind of smell coming through in the background. This gives it that world weary quality. Additionally, there are hints of this herbal soapiness that pop up occasionally. Greco has said that he is interested in capturing these moments between life and death with his horticultural specimens and that influences here. This also reminded me a little bit of his first release, Uyer. Now as you go through the dry down the scent which was dense becomes more porous 
letting in some air becomes drier and kind of expands a bit the animalic leather hints which were in the background become more prominent some inky slightly smoky green resinous pine tar joins the narcissus there is also this interesting compound called ambra rom which gives both the ambery tarry labdanum facets as well as this salty musky leathery smell which is a hint of tobacco definitely has some carnal sexual undertones coming through at this point the leather that was in the beginning comes back to focus here it is of the horsey stable kind definitely feels like an equestrian saddlery leather as you get to the far dry down the compost like character of the florals become more mossy this is the point where it reminded me of some old school green leathery mossy sheep press but this does not have the oak moss maybe some patchouli but that vintage impression is present the smooth rubbery latex smell provides some contrast to the scratchy textured florals the transitions are fairly slow with this scent this abstract mossy florals with the leather on the musky amber is how the scent closes out the performance is pretty good lasts for 9 to 10 hours projects good for the first hour or so and settles down from then on overall moderate projection which i prefer for this kind of obscure scents more for fall and winter so colder conditions i took a sample of this to india and tried wearing it there and felt that the compost floral decay accord was amplified and not as pleasant in the warmth i also think that it works better with fewer sprays this is one that i mostly like to wear for myself during the weekends when i'm at home and not to preoccupied so not one which i would wear too often in summary i'm taken with this really enjoy this surreal rubik's cube like temperament of the scent i was getting a different combination of the notes on the divergent experience every time i wore it really like the modern vintage styling so what would be a traditional masculine powerhouse became more of a conceptual scent one thing i was missing initially was what i assumed as a lack of optimism to contrast the more brooding haunting aspects which in my book usually takes the scent from good to very good I usually got the answer from the humanistic bodily aspects which are present throughout the scent and really became evident in the heat. If anything that's one of the positives of wearing it in India. Greco had mentioned recalling spending summer in the south of Italy with his family during the inception of this project. I myself am reminded of rolling in grass, playing with friends and when you get that mud on your back and as your body starts to warm up and it mixes with your sweat you get this muggy earthy green smell. that kind of idea is what i got the florals also showed their brighter radiant side in the heat along with the fresh soapy nuances in the dry down so these aspects brought a good amount of contrast and duality i applaud how they have tried to translate this blurred memory continuum as a perfume also think it is one of the best shalrik creations in recent times it is a good balance between his two styles his more artistic luton side and the more composed Tarao traditional Chanel style. The last point of scrutiny that I do with such fragrances that have a lot of backstory, history or outside artistic merit imposed on them. You know the talk about ingredients, flashy presentation, badly translated French and how it is a tribute to Napoleon and all that jazz. So I like to see if what is inside the bottle stands on its own when all that noise is removed. Obviously in this case there is some traction recently. this kind of positioned as this intellectual highbrow some may even say pretentious kind of perfume with a big perfume limited release and expensive price tag so there is always a possibility of fomo kicking in and the mind tries to conform itself to what is being said and i can report as per my taste i actually like the scent for what it is having said that i also know friends who agree that it is well made but it is not their taste which for me makes total sense as a proper niche indie fragrance and probably made me like it even more so there you have it a rock as mentioned in my 2023 list one of my best pickups of the year and just generally one of my favorite scents in recent times hope you enjoyed it take care and ciao